Check out our new iPhone application to keep track of your orchids. Link in the description box. Hi there! Welcome to another Orchid Diary video. This time for the month of July and a tad different because I'm about to leave for vacation in Ireland. I'm so happy and excited to travel to Ireland again and we're about to leave on Sunday. It's Saturday now and unfortunately I spotted spider mites Thursday night. Such a bummer. And at the moment I'm in a total preparation chaos, spraying pretty much my whole orchid collection with an oil-based solution which worked quite well for me in the past as a treatment against spider mites. At the moment I'm cleaning everything, the trays, the plants, the windowsill and at the same time I'm trying to soak the plants very well. I want them to be as hydrated as possible before I leave. The plants are going to be watered once or twice while I'm away with this pumping spray bottle and that's not as good as soaking but I'm going to put them in trays like this so that a bit of water will be able to sit in the tray of course just for plants that are being watered together and share water all the time anyway like these three here keep your fingers crossed that they are going to be all right when I come back I'm planning on buying some neem powder to make neem stock because I found that this is quite a good prevention for spider mites and I might have to treat them with an oil-based solution when I come back a second time. I think some orchid growers call themselves peelers. They like to peel off dried sheets I'm no peeler at all, but I think now with the spider mite problem, I should remove the old sheets. Oh, I really don't like to do that because I think those sheets prevent the pseudobulbs from losing too much water through transpiration. Here I tried to film the spider mites through a magnifying lens and didn't really succeed. I wanted to show you the damage though. This is how a new growth of my yellow Leliocatlia looks like. And here's another one looking very sad, deformed. The energy has been sucked out of them. But overall the plant looks quite healthy. That's why I didn't notice the spider mites immediately. And here's my Phalaenopsis mariae in bud. So many buds, I counted over 40 of them. Yeah, despite I reported it not too long ago and it lost a couple of its roots and the newest leaf stayed a bit smaller. But it's about to bloom beautifully. I'm so excited to see so many blooms on this plant again. It's a really nice one. I think I will link a video to this one in bloom in the upper right corner of the screen. Last year it bloomed twice, which was quite unusual. Certainly inspired by Miss Orchid Girl Danny's wick experiment, I took three pieces of short synthic and made a wick out of them. And here we are, the wick is reaching the bottom of the decorative pot this plant usually sits in. And last time it bloomed I noticed that it needs quite a lot of moisture while it's in bloom and it dehydrated quite fast and the blooms were spent faster than they should have been. So maybe this wick helps. It's a bit of a risk 
as well because I've never tried it out before. And here's my Recara Francis Fox. It kept falling out of its small pot. It didn't have too many roots when I got it. But greetings to Anna Maria. Look, I have a new growth here. It's quite nice. No sheep or birds yet. Maybe I'm lucky when I come back. It's sitting in Ceramis Special Orchid Medium. But should I peel off these sheaths as well for the sake of prevention? I really don't want to. Let me ponder a bit. And do you remember the two Leodoros I got from a friend? I showed them in the last Orchid Diary video. And they're doing quite well, although I did not repot them another, I think, two or three weeks. Shame on me. But as you can see, they have both started growing a new leaf. And there are also a few new root tips occurring at the stem and also inside the pot. So fingers crossed that they are doing well in my care. A quick look at my favorite orchid, my BLC. It has been sprayed. The leaves are quite glossy right now. And I just wanted to show you the stage of the new growth at the moment. Here's the biggest one which is in bud, not completely mature yet, but on its way. And another one here. And there is a small one here. And this one is new as well, but I haven't seen any buds yet. Yeah. It's doing quite well. I hope to see flowers when I come back. And here is some nighttime footage of a huge grasshopper on my balcony. Beneath the shading cloth there is my Cattleya, my Cattleya Pink Jaguar to be exact. And if you don't like insect footage, you might want to skip the next one or two minutes. It was really funny to find this guy on my balcony. took off. I unfortunately forgot to film my Psychopsis with four blooms on three spikes, which is a pity. But I don't want to miss filming this Vanda in bloom. It's my Vanda Mimi Palmer Cross, my little fragrant Vanda. Look at these beautiful blooms. And they're highly fragrant. I think it's my most fragrant orchid. I don't think that the last flower spike, the third one, will make it. But it's already putting out quite a show. And here's a very quick look at my cleaned and empty windowsill. In the corner that is where my huge 
blue vanda normally stands and here are the hooks for my other vandas and here is my little orchid windowsill spider that is taking care of pests normally and here are the blue skies there's a heat wave coming look at this this is my Renanthopsis Mildred Jameson and I made a video about it when I reported it in 2016. I did report it because of these fruiting bodies and mold in the pot. And this is footage of 2018, so the mold came back. I obviously changed the medium and now it's being eaten by these fruiting bodies again. But I'm not going to repot the plant this time. It had to go through a major setback because of my rough repotting and this time it's going to have to live with these guys in here. And I remember it was quite happy with the fungus in the pot. It was only me who wasn't happy. Yeah, but I have to use a decorative pot I really hope this will be enough so that the fungus won't spread into other pots. I think I'm going to cut this spike here and this one here, hoping that there will be a second or third spike coming out of one of these nodes. And here's an example of how I arrange the plants while I'm away. These are plants that are hanging at the window, typically. But now I've put them in this tray together. And some of them are going to share some water. But that's okay. These are quite healthy plants. In the back here is BC Yellow Bird. And it has so many new growths. Here, everywhere. And one of them is early. This one in the back, it's in bed. I hope to see some nice blooms when I'm back. And yeah, normally these plants are hanging directly at the window, but they dehydrate quickly there. That's why I decided to put them in this tray a bit farther away from the window. I think I have never shown you this fell hybrid that I received from my colleagues a couple of months ago. It wasn't in bloom, so we didn't know how it would turn out. And now it's in quite beautiful bloom. I know the lighting isn't too good anymore because it's already in the evening while I'm filming. But you can see the veining, you can see the little dots and the interesting lip. Yeah, I really like this fell. Although it's a common hybrid. And this is the pot it came with. It came in this medium. I wouldn't have potted this fell into this medium because it's a quite big pot, I think 14 centimeters and this medium holds moisture, but I will see how it goes. I actually wanted to bring some Cattleya Divisions to Ireland, but I don't dare bringing them because they might have spider mites. Um, this plant, my dendrobium berry, is in another room that is not affected. So I will try to bring this cakey with me. But the thing is that one of the roots has poked through one of the leaves and now I have to do some surgery. I have a knife already. So I've cut a little window in this leaf from here and I've cut off the cakey and now I'm trying to pull it out. It's 
the longest route. That's why I'm trying to save it. I need both hands though. It's just a tiny plantlet, but you might see that the oldest growths of my dendrobium berry aren't bigger. I started this plant with such a little khaki too. I don't remember when though, maybe six years ago. I almost forgot this poor guy that was blooming outside on the balcony. Luckily I remembered it was out there. It's Sunday morning and we're about to leave. And I filled the pot with water and will let it sit in there and write a note so that the person who is taking care of my orchids can remove the water in about a week or so. But it's so dehydrated I think it will be okay sitting in water for a little longer. This poor bloom has sunburn. And here you can see that the plants are sitting in water. Not much, just a little bit. some birds. This is very exciting. It's a beautiful Brassavola hybrid. Okay, now I have to go. But first I'm going to harvest these tomatoes out there. And then I took off to Ireland. I really hope you enjoyed this video, although it was a bit unorganized, but there was even more chaos than I shared with you. I hope you are enjoying the summertime. Happy growing to all of you. Bye bye.